This machine sorts falling blocks. It uses no mods, no commands, and as you can see, it's literally sorting physical blocks into separate stacks. So before we start, I just want to be real clear that this device was not made by me, uh, but it was made by my friends Fidolicious and Zeoran on the CubeCrowd server, who have graciously allowed me to share it and explain it to the best of my ability. And what is this actually useful for? Well, if you're like Mr. Korwalski on YouTube, and you have some giant art printer, then this could be very useful for sorting your concrete powder back into the designated spots. Something else you could also use this for is Connect 4, where you want to sort the concrete powders or sands that you used in the game back into the proper stacks. And uh, yeah. So as you may know, there are several falling blocks in Minecraft. You have all 16 colors of concrete powder, you have red sand, you have sand, and you have gravel. And traditionally, the way you might want to sort these is using a hopper item sorter, but that deals with items and not the physical blocks themselves. So because there's no way to actually place blocks using dispensers or anything like that, we have to do something much different. And that is where zero tick pistons come in. Now, I'm no expert in zero tick redstone, but I do understand enough of it to explain this whole concept to you. So essentially what zero tick redstone is, is that when you power and depower a redstone line in the same exact game tick, that generates a zero game tick pulse. And this is primarily useful for pistons. So with a zero game tick pulse, uh, this piston will instantly transport its block from here up to here. And this is in contrast to a regular pulse where a piston will actually take three game ticks to transport its block. So you can see this is kind of slow. So it takes three game ticks to move that block, but with this one, it's going to take zero game ticks. So this piston over here actually instantly teleported its block from here up to here. And we can do that again, and it will retract, retract its block. Now, there's actually a few ways to generate a zero tick pulse. One way is using tile tick priority, and another way is using some quasi-connectivity trickery, uh, and like a, I think you call it a sub tick update order or whatever. Um, I'll get into that in just a second. So the first way is using the tal tick priority. And the way that Minecraft's game code actually works is that it updates repeaters first, and then it updates comparators. So even though these two will power in the same exact game tick, um, Minecraft is actually processing the repeater first, and then it's processing the comparator. So in the same exact game tick, this repeater is going to power this piston, and then after that, it's going to power this piston. So essentially, we're powering the piston, and then we're moving this block out of the way, and that depowers the piston in the same exact game tick, which allows it to instantly uh, teleport its block. And another way to generate a zero tick pulse is using this over here. So Minecraft actually has a thing called quasi-connectivity, and if you don't know what that is, basically it means that anything that powers this piston will push it out, and also anything that powers the block above this piston will also push it out. So uh, pistons actually use the same game code as a door. So a door will activate if anything powers the bottom half or top half, and that same game code goes for this piston, except this isn't currently powered because it doesn't know that it should be powered, but when I update it with a block like that, it powers. So even though there's nothing directly powering this piston, um, this block is powering the air block above it, um, which is powering this piston using quasi-connectivity. Now I can remove that and then I can update the piston and it will retract. So this is sort of what we're using here. So what's going to happen is that this repeater powers this piston and then using quasi-connectivity, this piston is also going to fire because it's being updated by the piston above it. And then this piston will push out and it will also update this piston, which will also push out because of quasi-connectivity. And that pushes these two sand blocks up. And when these two sand blocks are pushed up, it stops any transmission to this piston uh, which generates our zero tick pulse. So if that didn't make any sense to you, that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and move on with the demonstration. So why do we need zero tick pistons in the first place? Well, as I said, when you zero tick a piston, it transports blocks instantly, and that is crucial to how our sorting system works. So this device that I have right here is basically a smaller version of that, except it's a different setup. Um, this one was also made by Fidolicious, and it has a bit of a modification uh, by Melody479. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a demonstration of this one. So 
Right now we have red sand in this slot, so we are sorting for red sand. So when I place a block here, this is going to get sorted into the red sand pile. I can do it again. And it always sorts into the red sand pile. Uh, something else I can do, I can place a blue concrete powder. And this does not get sorted into the red sand pile. Now, this isn't actually sorting for blue concrete powder. It's just sorting for anything that is red sand, or sorry, red concrete powder. So I place, I place red concrete powder, it sorts that. I place a sand, it will sort it into this pile. So it's just sorting for the red concrete powder right now. So in order to sort for multiple blocks, we can actually stack multiple of these modules on top of each other. So you can see I have red concrete powder, I have orange, I have yellow, I have green and I can put uh, red concrete powder in, and that will sort into the red stack. I can sort orange, and I can sort yellow, and I can sort green. I can also sort blue right now, And you can see that goes into the blue stack. But of course, we're not actually sorting for blue. We're just sorting for anything uh, that's not red, orange, yellow, or green. So I could put sand in. And that will also sort into the blue stack because, uh, yeah, it's not sorting for blue. It's just sorting for whatever these are. And now I know what you're probably thinking. This uses zero tick pistons. But how does it actually sort the blocks into the proper stacks? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. And... The answer is actually block IDs and scheduled ticks. So right here, I have laid out a few different game ticks. So each one of these modules represents a different game tick. And I have our simple little setup here. And right here, you can imagine we have game tick zero. So we have a red concrete powder, which is the block we want to sort for. And we have a blue concrete powder, which is the block we actually want to sort through the system. So on the very first game tick, we're going to zero tick this piston, which instantly pushes this red concrete powder out above the air. And then despite what you might think, sand and concrete powder and stuff like that, it doesn't actually start falling right away. It actually takes two game ticks before it starts falling. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to zero tick this piston, which instantly pushes this red concrete powder out. And then instead of falling right away, this concrete powder actually schedules itself to fall in another two game ticks. And it's important to note that it's not the actual concrete powder that gets the scheduled tick. It is the current XYZ position of the block that gets the scheduled tick. So on the very next game tick, we're going to zero tick this piston, which instantly pushes this blue concrete powder into this position. And it also pushes this red concrete powder back into position. And then on the very next game tick, this is when our scheduled tick uh, from game tick one expires. So remember, this is this XYZ position is going to schedule itself to fall in two game ticks. And now on game tick three, it expires. Except Minecraft's code actually checks that the, the block where the scheduled tick was scheduled, it makes sure that that block is the same exact block. So if this block is still red concrete powder, then on this very game tick, it's going to instantly start falling. Uh, but then, um, if it's not the same block, say it's blue concrete powder, well now the red sand isn't, or sorry, the red concrete powder is not going to fall, and now it's the blue concrete powder that's in position. But the blue concrete powder is not the same as red concrete powder in the block IDs. So instead of falling right away, it's, the blue concrete powder is going to schedule a new scheduled tick. So it's going to schedule itself to fall in another two game ticks. And this actually happens on game tick two. So right now, this piston got scheduled, or sorry, this piston got zero ticked. It pushes this concrete powder out. And this is actually going to schedule itself to fall in two game ticks. So this is when the red concrete powder from game tick one expires. It's going to realize that it's not there, so it's not going to do anything. And then this scheduled tick from here is going to expire on game tick four. And this is when the blue concrete powder starts falling. So hopefully that made sense.
So we can do the same exact example, except this time it's using red concrete powder. So we have red concrete powder here, and we're actually going to sort red concrete powder into the system. So on the very first game tick, we zero tick this piston, push this block out, um, and then this gets a scheduled tick. So this is scheduled to fall in two game ticks. And then on the very next game tick, we push the other red concrete powder out into position. And now on the final game tick, um, this scheduled tick expires. So from game tick two, this gets scheduled. And then on this game tick, that same block from the same XYZ position uh, expires. And it's going to realize that it's still red concrete powder in the same position. So it instantly starts falling. So even though here we have this red concrete powder got retracted, so it's back here, um, on this game tick, you know, if we place sand here, it realizes that it is uh, the same uh, block ID. It realizes that it's red concrete powder. And so instead of falling in another two game ticks, um, it actually uses the scheduled tick that this block scheduled and it instantly starts falling. So yeah, I can go ahead and show that in slow motion here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and freeze the game and I could sort red concrete powder into here, and then I'm going to step it. So I'll step one, two, three, and four. So this block gets instantly pushed out into, into this position. And then on the very next game tick, the other piston is going to extend. So now we have that, and there is a bit of a graphical issue. Now you can not see, you don't see where the other red concrete powder is, but if I keep stepping, can realize that that happens and then this block gets pushed out by this piston and then it starts falling so i'm going to go ahead and step forward a bit and we'll do blue concrete powder now so if i go ahead and tick freeze we're going to place that blue concrete powder there we're going to go ahead and step you'll see the red concrete powder again gets zero ticked into position and then on the next game tick we push the blue concrete powder out, so I'm gonna do that. And now, this blue concrete powder is scheduled to fall in two game ticks. So we're gonna go one, two, and usually you would expect it to fall, but now this piston is under it, which prevents it from falling. And then if I go ahead and step more, this gets sorted into that. So basically what's happening is that the red concrete powder is going to fall one game tick before the blue concrete powder would, or any other falling block. So uh, when I put the red concrete powder in, and I go ahead and step, this red concrete powder gets pushed out. Um, but in contrast to, let me go ahead and unfreeze. In con contrast to the blonde blue concrete powder or any other block, um, it's going to take a bit of extra time to fall, and so this piston won't be able to push it, and instead it just falls through. So if you're still with me after all that chibber jabber, uh, thank you very much for still watching. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and uh, now we're actually going to get into the good stuff. So. Uh, as I showed you, you could use this uh, stacked machine to sort multiple different uh, types of falling blocks, but that is actually really slow, and it takes up a lot of vertical space. So let's get on to the good stuff. So this is another setup, which is the same as my opening machine, um, except I've taken off a whole bunch of it, um, and I've modified a bit. So this machine actually sorts for two different types of concrete powder. And so for this, you might imagine that you had, say, a Connect 4 game, and you have your concrete powders used in the game, and you want to sort them back into the proper stacks. So this machine is a modified version of the bigger one. We're going to go ahead and activate it. And it's going to sort the blue concrete powder in the blue into the blue concrete powder stack and the red concrete powder into the red concrete powder stack. And so just like my explanation, this uses the same concept to sort the concrete powder, except we have a bit of a different input system. So we have four different stacks of concrete powder, which allows us to actually input things into the system really quickly um, because you have to wait for sand to fall and all that. Um, so by using four different stacks, 
um, we're able to push this sand into the sorting system really quickly. And then what happens is that the sand gets pushed to here, it updates this wall, which updates this observer, and it does a whole bunch of um, zero tick redstone, as I explained. And so what happens is that we're going to compare this red concrete powder uh, with the block that ends up here. So say I put red concrete powder in, it gets sorted to there. Let's say I put blue concrete powder in, it falls right to there. So because the blue concrete powder takes a little bit longer to fall than the red concrete powder, um, this piston is actually able to pull the blue concrete powder up and this piston pushes it out and then this pu piston pushes it down. And the reason we're using this piston is because we actually need to push it out of the way so that there's enough time for the other one behind it um, to come in. And now last but certainly not least, we're back at the main sorter. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and you will see it starts sorting the blocks. So you can see uh, the blocks going into the proper stacks. Oh, and by the way, this machine is actually really loud, so you might want to turn your audio down uh, for the next few seconds. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and then it will stop sorting. So I'm not going to get into specifics of exactly how this one works, um, but it does use you know the same modules over and over so it can be stacked. Um, and this basically just uses the same exact concept that I already explained. So we're going to have a concrete powder, gets into here, updates that wall, um, and yeah, it just starts the whole system. We have a really fast input system. Um, and I should mention, you know, you don't need this really fast input system if you don't want to. Um, you can use one stack of concrete powder instead. You don't, you don't have to have four stacks. Um, but yeah, this just makes it faster, having four stacks. So it gets pushed into the system, and then we're comparing it with red concrete powder. And if it is red, red concrete powder, then it sorts. And if it's not red concrete powder that we're sorting right now, then that's going to take a bit longer to fall. Uh, which is useful because we can pull it up and we can push it over to the next one and then we're going to compare it with orange and then if it's not orange you know it gets pulled up by this piston and it gets pushed along then compare it with yellow and then green and then etc all the way down the line until you get to the last one uh, leaving only the gravel one remaining so there is one there really is only one con to this other than it being really loud uh, the con is that um, you actually have to have blocks behind it um, to sort new blocks. So what I mean by that is if you want to sort a gravel, let's say I put a gravel here, um, then in order to sort all the way to the end, you have to have a whole other bunch of blocks behind it in order for that gravel to reach the very end. So yeah, it's not the best in that way, but it is really fast. And uh, yeah, I hope it's useful to some of you. I know this is quite a technical video. So it, like I said, if you have like a big map art printer or something, this could be really cool. Or if you have something else um, like Connect4 or you know anything that requires you to sort physical blocks, I think this is quite revolutionary, honestly, uh, for redstone tech. And you know, it's not new or anything. Um, the game code, it's just, you know, that's the way that the game is coded, which allows us to do this. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't really seen anything like this before uh, in Minecraft. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. And again, I want to thank Fidolicious and Zeoran for making this. It is honestly a mind-blowing build. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.